Hello everybody, this is Skip Allen, and I'm going to be doing a demonstration for the Artisan Calligraphy Brush Pack. You can use this brush pack in Painter 2019, Painter 2020, or Painter 2021. Okay, so what you're looking at is an image that I created, and I wrote this little haiku, I think of it as a haiku anyway, um, and I then rendered the haiku in uh, calligraphy using the foundation pen in this calligraphy uh, brush, or in this calligraphy brush pack. Okay, so that gives you an idea of what you can do. Let's talk a bit about these brushes and what's in the pack and how to use them. If I open up the pack, you'll see that I have copper plate, foundation and gothic three different types of calligraphy brushes now they're different brushes in several different ways i'm going to first open up a practice sheet so i'm going to come down here and let's see come on here we go i'm going to open up the foundation practice sheet now, it has calligraphy already written on it, and I'm just going to get rid of that for the time being. And let's talk about what's different about each one of these brushes. The foundation brush, what's important with it is that it is set at a 30-degree angle. So the, when, you, when you write calligraphy, you're going to hold the brush at an angle so that you get a thick and thin line de depending on how you uh, move your your pen and foundation is usually 30 to 35 degrees in uh, with an angle and that is true with quite a number of different types of calligraphy now if I switch to copper plate the angle for copper plate is set at 57 degrees, I think. And so copper plate is really 55 to 60 uh, degrees, maybe 59, I can't quite remember. But it's a much steeper uh, slant. Gothic is set at 45. So if I do goth gothic, what? doesn't look any different. Let me see if I actually went to copper plate. Okay. Let's, let's uh, tell you what, let's start again with foundation. Foundation is 30 degrees and that would look like that. Copper plate is 57 and it would look like that. Let's go a little straighter. There we go. Okay. And then Gothic is at 45 degrees and it would look like that. So you have three different angles that you're working with. Now, not only do you have three different angles, but you also have pressure in some of the brushes. All of copper plate is set up to work with pressure. That means that I can do a thin line no matter which direction I go because it's set up with pressure. And that doing that is, is a way to get a flourish. But I can also do it where I get thin and then I increase my thickness and thin and increase my thickness and thin again. So copper plate gives you the, the capability of deciding when and how thick you really want to make the brush. Okay? Now, if we go to goth to foundation, did I say foundation last time? I was talking about copper plate. If I go to foundation, I can't do that same thing because it's not set up with pressure. I'll get thick and thin by virtue of how the brush, the direction the brush is painting, but I won't get thick and thin based on pressure. And the same thing with gothic is it's going to give me a thick and thin line and I can get somewhat of a flourish, but it's, it's kind of, uh, heavy duty compared to copper plate. So I give you two brushes, foundation flourish, 
which is the same foundation brush, but we've added pressure to it. So with the foundation flourish, you can use that 30 degree angle and decide how thick or how thin it's going to be. And the same thing is you have a Gothic flourish that will do the same thing, thin and thick, depending on pressure. Okay, now what else do we have? We have a copper plate cloning, a foundation cloning, and a Gothic cloning. So if I go to the foundation cloning, this is a cloning brush. It's already set to clone. And if you've not created a clone, then the brush or painter defaults to whatever pattern is currently active. So in this case, the clone source is the current pattern. And I don't know which one I've selected. This one. It's uh, one of mine that I did in some demo someplace or another. So when you look at the way this paints, I'm not going to get black. I'm going to get the pattern that whatever is in that pattern. So I'm going to get stuff like this. Okay. Now that means you can, you can have some really fun uh, calligraphy with uh, using patterns or you can also use your textures, or you can embed an image and, and work with that. If you have an image that's real, uh, that would look real nice as the background for these strokes, then you could just embed it and use it as the clone source. Okay, so then we go to the next brush is uh, we have a, a marker brush and a watercolor brush for all three of the types. So if we go to marker, I want to open up my layers panel and I'm going to delete this top layer and add it back. Now what you see is I keep my canvas clean. I have my guidelines here on this layer and I lock it and I've added a new layer. Now I've selected foundation marker. I'm going to get a color. Let's go to, uh, how about a kind of a funky green. Okay, now when you work with a marker and you touch the canvas or the layer, the first thing it's going to do is change from default to gel layer. So watch, when I start to paint, you look at that layer and it's now a gel layer. And that's because um, these watercolor and marker brushes work on gel so that you get a transparency and whites do not show. Now a marker though, when you cross a marker with the brush a second time, you're going to get a line, you know, where they cross a uh, thickness. And that can be very nice with, um, uh, working with your calligraphy. That is not the same thing, though, with watercolor. If I switch to watercolor, you're still going to create a gel layer, and it's still going to be transparent to what's underneath. But if I come in with a different color, let's grab, uh, say, an orangey color. And I put that down. It looks like it's the same. Everything's working the same until I cover. And in this case, the watercolor brushes will cover the previous color. Okay, it's still a gel layer. It still will be transparent to what's underneath, but it's going to cover itself. Now, if you take the same stroke and cover, cross over it, same color, you're not going to get that uh, double layer that you get with a marker pen. It's just not going to work the same. So you have a cloner, you have a watercolor, you have a marker, you have a regular brush that think of it as ink, and you have the split foundation 
um, and you have flourish brushes for the foundation and graphic, and then the copper plate, all of those are uh, done as flourish. Now, there's one other thing we need to talk about. How do you set up your um, your pins? How do you how do you set up these guidelines? Well, when you're working with calligraphy, if you aren't designing your own and you're using, you go and you find a plate somewhere. This is an example of a plate. This is one I did when I was teaching a class, and this is foundational hand. So this is a plate I can use to learn how to do that particular uh, font. And what it'll do is it'll, it'll set it up in uh, graphic lines. It will show you the direction of the stroke and how many strokes are required to make the letter. This one is, uh, you have the one stroke and then two strokes and you're done. The B is one stroke, two strokes and you're done. Um, a D though is one stroke, two stroke, three stroke and you're done. So some of them are more strokes than others. Now, how do you decide this, these guidelines, where do they go? Well, the guidelines are proportional to the width of the nib. So when you look at one of these foundation plates, it should tell you nib width equals whatever number, angle at whatever angle, and as long as it's within about five degrees of 30, you could use the foundation. You will have a sender and descender nib widths equal three or whatever, and the cab nib width, cap nib width, nib <laughs> width, <laughs> I'm being tongue-tied today. The cap nib, nib width is six. Now, minuscule letters are the lowercase letters, and they fit in this little grouping here. Uh, where they are descenders, they come down the page like that to the descender mark. If it's an ascender, it goes up the page, and it goes up all the way to the top. So you have you have in here. Um, let me switch to my uh, layer adjuster tool, and if you look over here, you have a baseline, and you would go four nibs up. That would give you your minuscule area. And from the baseline, if you go six up, that would be four and two more. That gives your, you your majuscule line. That's where your capital letters begin. And if you go from the top of this area, three uh, nib widths, that's going to give you your ascender area. And three nib widths down below would give you your uh, descender. So how do you do these nib widths? How do you set that up? Well, let me close this up a bit. And in in traditional, you would take your pin and you would turn it so that it was exactly perpendicular, which would give you the width of the brush. And so you would take that width and you would mark across, um, like if you were doing this thing and you wanted to do four, you would mar mark across. Um, I can't do it because it's at a angle, but it would look something like that. You would mark four nib widths, and that would be from your baseline up to the end there. Two more nib widths would bring you to your majuscule line, and three nib widths bring you up to the ascender. Three nib widths from the baseline brings you down to your descender. So you have a descender, baseline, a majuscule line, and an ascender. Um, and that's how you would do it traditionally. But we can't do that in Painter. I can't turn this brush um, to, to an angle there because it, it's set up uh, to always stay in that particular angle. So what I have to do is think about this in terms of the actual width of the nib. Now we know that this brush ha is a 10 pixel size. Now the size of brushes in Painter 
are given to you as radiuses, not as a diameter. All right, so it's half the size or the width of the brush. So this particular brush that says 10 pixels is actually 20 pixels wide. So what you'd want to do is go to your canvas, go to virtual grid, and go to virtual grid options. Now here you can set your horizontal spacing to 20 pixels, your vertical spacing to 20 pixels. You can set this as a horizontal or dot grid or a rectangular grid. And I usually set it as a rectangular grid. You can set the color of the grid color and whatever color for your background. And then you just simply say, OK, I'm going to cancel. OK, so the 20 by 20 gives you your virtual grid and then to come up with your guidelines, your, all you need to do is just make a straight line across on these particular uh, virtual, uh, virtual grid here. And that, that would give you the proportion to work with the size of your brush. Now, if this brush had 20 pixels width, then that means it's actually 40 pixels, and my little spacing here would be double the size. Okay? Now, let's just, for funsies, we'll do one quick little uh, calligraphy. We will see if this is on black. It's not. We'll take it down to black. And um, I'm just going to use the foundation. I want to go to foundation regular foundation. There we go. And I'll write something down here. Let's just write, we'll try to write calligraphy. So it's one, two lines, two strokes. The A is one, two. And you want to think about the spacing as you go. Now, see, I missed that line a little bit. That's not good. You want to take it on up to the line. And what's great about working in Painter is you've got the undo. The L is going to come up to the very top and then down to the baseline. And your next one is going to do the same thing. And you want to kind of think about the spacing in between. Then your I looks just like an L, but it starts, uh, it stays within this space here. Your I is dotted like that. And then the G comes around. I'm a little bit shaky. <laughs> I stayed up too late last night. And then comes around like this. Back around like that. And there you go. Clig. And then we need an R. Which is a fairly simple, oh, excuse me, fairly simple. And then we want a a again. Now, when you do two letters, same letter in the same calligraphy, you want them to kind of look like they're about the same size. And this one's a little bit big for the other one, but it, it looks nicer if you try to make them be the same size. And a P would come down like this to the descender, and then it would make its little p like that and you want to make these open spaces like for if i were having a d i'd want these open circles to be about the same size as well and then and this really takes practice i am very much i'm sorry i keep touching the uh uh rocker switch i'm very much out of practice i haven't been doing a lot of calligraphy lately so you can see i'm a little bit shaky here but this is the way you do it. Just like that. And there you go. You have, uh, you've written calligraphy using these foundation pens. And you really, I mean, with practice, you can do pretty nice stuff. Now, I'll show you another image that I did. Uh, this was several years ago, but it'll give you uh, a much more um, 
it's a much more decorative font. This is based off of some type of copper plate. Uh, it's my own version of it. But anyway, you can see that you can get a lot more um, elaborate with your uh, calligraphy. So you can go from that to the one that I showed you in the beginning, which is this one. Let me turn that off. There you go. And that's just uh, like an illustration with uh, calligraphy on it. All right, that's it about these brushes. I hope you like them. Um, I think they're really workable, and you can do some very interesting calligraphy with it. Remember to make yourself some uh, practice sheets and practice. Now, if you don't want to make the sheets, you can buy books that have paper in them that are already lined, and you could scan that and put it into Painter. Um, I've even found graph paper, and, and I don't know if I've found lined paper. You probably can find lined paper that's digitized, uh, something that you would go and find on the web, and then you could download it and load it into Painter. And you do want to use those guidelines as you're working with calligraphy. All righty, that's about all I can tell you. I hope you enjoy the brushes. Bye-bye.